Hi, it's Paula from Paula Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have been working from my scrap buckets to get them empty before I go and get some new fabrics. And after a few projects where I used uh, children fabrics, I am down to a big batch of very small scraps. I, I could put them into a crumb blocks, but instead I have trimmed them all to two and a half by one and a half inch uh, pieces. And I am ready for another uh, fun scrappy block. So today I'll be working with very small scraps to create mini potato chip blocks. If you have made some bigger ones, you know how addictive these are and you can make so many options of blocks with just this one design. Uh, and I covered one standard size um, from this tutorial with snowballs and a large one with curves. So, uh, so now time for a tiny one with, with those uh, scraps from the remaining projects. Because I'm using small scraps, I will focus on organizing this work to make this as a part of my leaders and enders sewing. Um, leaders and enders is something you, you you sew kind of in between other projects. So before you, you sew a block for another project, you want to start from sewing something else because that prevents your uh, thread to sink into the machine and also kind of divides your work if necessary. So uh, that way you're creating another project, another quilt, another something uh, without even thinking about it. <laughs> so that's a great uh, uh, process. However, you can also use a jelly roll for this project as, as a project on its own. So let me cover the jelly roll uh, s side of it first and then we'll go uh, with how to organize the work with those small, small scraps. So when you take your jelly roll, I've got my strips here cut from, you know, scraps, but obviously uh, in the jelly roll you have a 40 or 42 uh, strips of 40 inches or, or so length. So what you want to take, you want to take your jelly roll and cut one and a half inch strips from it. For one block you will need four pieces so I don't know how many blocks you want to make so make your own calculation and cut that many uh, those small rectangles. So again four small rectangles um, for each of the blocks. Then with the remaining strips I suggest because you will have probably about I don't know maybe 34 inches left by then or, or, or so cut them into two or three lengths because you want to mix them up to make a nice colorful scrappy quilt you don't want to sew too many things uh, in the same combination so when you have your uh, your strips ready uh, what you want to do is sew them into the strip set so you will sew strip sets of two and strip sets of three so obviously I don't know how many you need to sew because I don't know how many blocks you will be making but there's a ratio here you can go with. So for every four strip sets of two you sew together you want to sew two of the strip sets of three uh, strips. So when you finish sewing and you will again slice them into one and a half inch uh, kind of uh, sections what you will have is four of those doubles and you will have two of the triple. So this is what you will have, two, two triples and four doubles. Now those first four you cut for, for each of the block four single pieces, you want to now sew them together this way on the longer uh, side of it and then you will sew one to the top when it's done and one to the bottom and then you have all the rest here uh, to put this block together so when you have that chunk here done you just add your sides so first double at the, uh, the sides another double will go top bottom and then you will have your triples on the sides and that will give you our uh, final block which I will show you in a minute so you can do it very quickly with a jelly roll or you can do it very quickly with the jelly roll you cut yourself from your own scraps. If you have a longer pieces of fabric you can cut into the two and a half inch strips. Now like I've mentioned I've got lots of uh, smaller scraps so I wasn't able to cut everything to two and a half inch. Most of it I was able to cut to like one and a half or inch wide and then I, I kind of cut them into uh, two and a half inch lengths. 
So how I prepared myself for the leader, leaders and, and their projects, so kind of do, do not get too much confused of how many uh, I want to make. However, if you just want to go sewing, take a bunch and sew it together. <laughs> but let's just kind of break it down into the phases. So phase one, uh, number of blocks times two. This is how many pieces you want to pick up from your bucket and you want to sew them by that edge. And that will give you the uh, beginning of your block. So this is how it will look. That's our beginning. So again, number of blocks times two, take that many pieces, put it in the separate bucket, use it, use it in your leaders and enders uh, uh, project or project on your own as well. So it, it's up to you. Once you've got that, you can put it away. And then we will take eight times number of your blocks, whatever it's going to be, eight times number of your blocks, take a bunch and sew them together, this time on the shorter edge. So, so this is how we're going to sew and this is what we're going to uh, create. So again, number of blocks times eight pieces and then you just crack on with your leaders and enders and sew them on the short edge. Once you've done it, put them aside. So then we'll create our triple section and I kind of divide it into two uh, stages. So you will take um, number of blocks times four because we need two for each of the blocks. So number of blocks times four. And again, you will sew them uh, at the shorter edge. So this is what you will have. Then you will add another bunch of the scraps and you will add the third part to the mix. So you, when you're adding that one, you don't have to count how many you need because you will just finish off of, of your doubles uh, and that will give you the, all the blocks you need for that part. Once you've done that, you've got your component blocks uh, as at the beginning. You will have two of those, you will have four of those, you will have your middle sections and then you will also have a, a pile of the singles because we still need to add the top and the bottom to this before we start uh, creating a block. So now we're ready to sew it as a f kind of final stage and I would say don't do it as a leader and enders perhaps. Uh, do one block at a time or batch blocks uh, at a time. It's just easier. Now I have been making mine very scrappy so um, I was just pulling from the hat and just putting them around my uh, center blocks. But if you want a little bit more design within the um, that block uh, then you probably want to lay it out first before you take it uh, to the sewing machine. The only thing I was concerning myself that I don't have the same fabric next to the same fabric. So let's lay out one and then we're taking and we'll see how quickly we can sew them together. Okay so I've got my uh, beginnings, the middle section, I've got my pairs and I've got my uh, three section parts. Um, this one is ironed because I was cutting them from the two and a half inch strip sets. These ones are not ironed because I was just stitching two uh, smaller pieces together. If you're working from the small scraps, I wouldn't iron it until the block is ready. So it's just saving a lot of time. So because I'm working with the very scrappy block, um, I'm just going to go with four middles here and I will just pick random stuff to kind of sew onto it. If you want to go with the specific look, potato chip blocks can have very uh, many different options. So if you're looking for specific uh, a layout, then you probably want to put your block one at a time first before you sew it together. But with these scrappy ones, it's very quick, very easy, and you just don't have to think a lot about what you're putting next to each other. I'm using kids fabric here on this occasion, but it could be anything really. So I will work with four blocks at a time. To so first I want to take my middle section, just open it up, finger press, pick something from my singles bucket, and uh, stitch to the side and I will just repeat that process for the first four middle sections. So you would obviously do it for uh, in one go for how many blocks you need to finish your project uh, and I would normally too but just to make sure I can that make that video not that long I'll just work with four blocks at a time. I 
I will leave that last bit here at the machine and I just cut first three. There's one more pair here. And I will do the same thing on the other side. The only difference is that I want to have that stitched piece now on top because I want to see which way that seam have gone. Whichever way it have gone is fine. It just you want to make sure you stitch on both sides the same direction so you don't have any uh, packers later there. We can fix those two but it's just easier to work through those and avoid them if we can. Now I can take back that last one I left there at the machine and I can carry on uh, chain piecing. So just the only thing I'm uh, kind of concerning myself about with kind of choices of color is that it's not the same fabric sticking to, to the same fabric uh, with that scrappy one. However, if I was doing some um, kind of more modern option and maybe use just, I don't know, five or six fabrics, I wouldn't mind if they um, touch each other because when you put them all together later, it will look like you worked really hard to achieve that effect. So again, lots of options with that uh, block. This last piece I've put other way around so I did check which way the seam is going to make sure I'm stitching it correctly. Okay, now I can cut the last three here. I will still keep that one in. It just saves the um, thread and kind of energy if you uh, chain piece everything. So again, just open it up, fingers pressed, and now I'm ready to add my pairs. So here we go, let's go with this one. So with the first stitching here on the side, I don't mind which way the seams are going, but we will repeat the process on the other side, that once I want to add that side to here, I want to have this way up, because then I will need to know which way I've sewn those um, seams. Which way they will go, it really doesn't matter. Whatever fabric tells you, just go with it. Now, like I said, the, the stitched uh, piece is at the top so I can see which way uh, those seams here went up so I don't um, mix them up. The bottom seam here is irrelevant because it doesn't uh, link at this point with anything. the middle stuff done now it's now a square and to be fair if you want to use this this uh, um, part to something else add maybe star legs to it or uh, I don't know just sew them as they are now it will look great too so it is a nice beginning of something but we will carry on with the potato so I'm just turning it around and I will add another pair uh, to the other side we are building now again uh, rectangle um, and the same uh, kind of uh, rule applies that I want to sew this one anyhow I want nothing is kind of linking with anything yet but when I sew the other side you want to have this side up so you can see which way you've sewn those seams here so you can do it the same direction on the other side okay so I've got my tops and bottoms added and now it's time to add the uh, triple section here to the side and it will be exactly the same I will sew one in one side in and then when I sew the other side I want to have the sewn in part already on top so I will quickly carry on with that right so I finished sewing my blocks and this is how they look uh, because I use small prints on most of them and they are kids type uh, as I've mentioned before some of them got really nice kind of uh, pictures coming out of here so it will make a really nice ice spike quilt as well you see there's a little bit of bunny here there's a bear here 
and so on. So it's a nice project uh, to uh, to make uh, with the small print uh, kids fabric. So my blocks are done. They are measure or they should measure six and a half inch. I did iron them. Now don't worry if they are not exactly six and a half inch because we're gonna add more steps to this uh, block and that will fix the problem if it isn't. <laughs> so. Uh, what you want to do is take another fabric and I've chosen some solids and cut them into six and a half inches as well. And what we'll do next is my easy square in a square method. So what I want to do is take my uh, block and sew all around it with the quarter inch allowance. If your squares are uneven, uh, don't worry that much. You just want to kind of choose one you will use as a uh, key one. Uh, you know that maybe the bigger one if that's what you want and just use the, the edge of that one to sew around okay I've sewn the quarter inch uh, all around and now I'm ready to uh, draw a line in my block I'm just going to uh, go diagonal from uh, seam to seam, not from the block itself because sometimes the sewing may not be exact. But I'm going from corner to corner on the seam and I will draw a line both direction. You can use a pen, you can use pencil here, uh, just something that will not kind of bleed to the layer be below but make a mark on the fabric. I'm just using pencil here because we will now cut on that line so there is no problem. Here you go. So you want to lift the top layer and fold it where, where you have one of those lines so you can snip in the middle into that cross and then you want to go and cut on the line you've made. And just go to the very end here and make sure that your corners are cut very well because we will be opening it up and we don't want to have any packers there. Okay, I've cut it. So I will take it now to the iron because obviously if I want to now trim it I need to make sure it is nice and flat. So let me quickly iron it. So here is my block and I want to square it up. Now I am going to square it up to 8 inches. You make it a little bit uh, bigger if you want to kind of save all the scrap of the fabric here. But I am not going to be... Um, uh, worry about myself that much about it. So eight inches. So what I want to do is uh, I'm looking for my eight inches here and I want to kind of center more or less uh, that point and then I will do the same thing. Once I've centered one side I will center the other side. Again more or less it's not the precision work here. You just want to have a square block which is eight inches um, in the size. So my ruler is eight inch, eight and a half, not eight. So obviously I need to now move down. So now I can align my eight inches line with the edges of the block I've trimmed on one side, and trim the other side. So here we go. So this block will look great on its own as well as a put together. I've made quite a few of similar blocks where there was something in the center and then we just did that easy square in the square method. But let's make it even more interesting. So in the last uh, tutorial I showed you how I used up the um, snowball corners. So now I've got the method of using them up. I don't mind snowballing everything. So let's see how it will look when we snowball at uh, this block. So what I want to take is my two and a half inch uh, scraps and you want to um, just finger press them on diagonal in the middle. You can take it to the iron as well or you can draw a line on the left side of the block uh, with the pencil, whatever method you prefer. I just like to finger press them because that is the quickest. And then I'll just take it to the machine and so on the diagonal here on all four corners.
finishing of my snowballs I will just cut more or less quarter inch away you can use scissors, you can use um, rotary cutter, it depends what you've got handy I will now take it to the iron board, open them up and let's show you the next step and all of those uh, cutouts from the snowballs are going to my bucket with the snowballs um, ready to be put into the another scrappy project and this is how the block looks like again it will look very good if you just put this stage on its own uh, as a pattern so uh, it will look great at this stage you can put the quilt together so now this block is eight inches so how many blocks you need to to produce the, the uh, quilt of the size you like you can go with it however uh, I've showed you how I did the braiding with the scraps I've showed you how I used my snowballs but I don't have a lot of those pieces yet now what I was also doing I was putting my uh, solid scraps on paper as well as you can see and I've got a lot of those rolls so what I will do I will actually add that at the bottom of the block to make it rectangular and then I will pop them on the design board and show you how they look together Okay, so let me show you how the block looks now. Uh, now. Um, so I've added this tape at the bottom and to be fair, I don't like it. It's just too much happening now. I've got my snowballs, I've got the scrappiness here and then snowballs and this small strip here and then another strip here. It's just too much, I think, for that uh, block. Uh, and it happens. I've made few only those blocks with the snowballs, so no problem there yet and I've made a test block when before the snowballs how it looks and I like those blocks much better this is another one with blue and another one with beige they look so much better so I think this is the layout I will go with I won't be snowballing more of those blocks I only made few of those like I said so I will still try to actually use it in my quilt just in a different uh, layout so uh, let me sew a few more and I will take you to the um, design board and show you how I'm planning to finish that quilt and uh, how I'm going to use the one with the snowballs as well. Before I show you my finished project, just a quick reminder where you can find me and how you can support my work. You can subscribe to my website to be notified when new tutorials, products or patterns are released. You can find me on my Facebook page, Pola Photo, or you can join my group page, Pola Quilting with Friends, where we all share a work made inspired by my tutorials and answer any questions you may have. There is Instagram account called Pola Quilting and if you like to share something you made based on my tutorials, please tag me using hashtag Pola Quilting with Friends. To support my work, please like, comment and share uh, when you see my posts or tutorials. Let your quilting friends know uh, about this channel and invite them to the group and subscribe to my channel. If you like to contribute extra, you can use a super thanks on YouTube or buying me virtual tea, coffee or lunch available on my page. All links are in the description below. I would like to thank you all for all the support uh, so far and letting me grow in what I do. So let's quickly go through the, all the options if you, as you have seen through the production of this blog. So first option was those uh, mini potato chip blocks just on their own. It will make a great quilt as larger one and, and uh, you'll be able to use up all of those small scraps to do it. I had some of the middle sections left so I put them together in nine patches uh, alternating direction. Um, great mix and match and even quicker leader and ender project. Uh, also will work as little uh, as by quilt if you have small print fabrics in it same as the other block. If you feel it may be uh, too busy, you can always just add plain squares to the mix and it will help to balance the colors. Next, I have used the easy square in the square method to put my blocks on diagonal. I have used this method a number of times with different inside blocks and uh, you cannot go wrong with them. And uh, adds an interest to any design really. Great block to put together on its own as well. And then I've added snowballs. <laughs> 
uh, on its own this is another great option I love the block uh, it didn't work with the tape but you know it is what it is um, and since I have now ongoing projects how to use up those small triangles then I have no issue with snowballing uh, again you can mix up with plain fabric for more balanced look or just use them as they are finally blocks I had in my head when I started really uh, I've added that strip uh, from the adding tape with plain fabrics uh, I would alternate the placement of the strip in each column so there is a nice movement on that pattern however as I was sewing my quilt uh, kind of evolved and now I've decided to make quilt using all of the options of the blocks uh, I like making lap quilts uh, for linus um, as they are good for children and adults alike so I make them more or less 40 by 60 inch so I now have all those blocks in layout 6 by 8 each block is 8 inch unfinished so it will be 7 and a half finished um, so the width will be 45 inch 8 blocks down with 2 blocks with that extra tape um, that will make about 65 inches so just about what I like in that size uh, in this layout is just um, to remember to have the same number of blocks with strip in each column and it will all uh, marry up and will be even at the end. And you know there will be not many uh, seams that you actually need to uh, match up as you're sewing uh, columns together. So here is my final layout, not yet sewn but you have an idea how it can look. Um, let me know what you think in the comments about this project, uh, how that block progressed and which one you like the best. Be sure to subscribe to see how it actually finished, how I quilted it, uh, because I will share it in some point in one of the coming videos. And any questions, just please ask. Happy sewing! Thank you for joining, thank you for watching and see you next time.